Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to this extremely valuable video. This video right here contains the correct data sets that you will need in order to sell an online course to anyone from all over the world. The PowerPoint presentation that you can appreciate when this short introduction ends is the fifth day of the seven day module course that I am selling on Udemy and Skillshare and has helped more than 4,900 active enrolled students create their own online courses. And I'm giving this completely for free here on YouTube. Now there are two reasons why I'm doing this. The first reason is that the information packed in this video right here has helped so many people and I wanted to reach even more people worldwide. The second reason why I'm doing this is that I have decided to move towards a more active way of teaching people. So if you find value in my sayings in this video right here, make sure to send me an email because I decided to actually take on the journey of active teaching and coach a select amount of individuals that qualify on how to create and sell online courses from their passions. So thank you very much and I hope you enjoy this video right here. So this is the blueprint that we're going to be following, the four-step introductory guide, again, for introductory videos of our courses. We start with the origin story, then we move to the vehicle story, the internal belief story, and the external beliefs story. So this is going to be the theoretical part that we're going to be focusing again in this day of the seven-day course creator challenge. We're going to have one lesson in the origin story, one lesson for the vehicle story, one lesson for the internal belief story, and one lesson for the external beliefs story. Trust me, everything is going to make sense. This is going to be a very valuable lesson to you. And if you actually nail every single one of those stories, if you nail the origin story, the vehicle story, the internal belief story, and the external belief story, this is going to be the crown jewel, okay? The ultimate introductory video of your course. And you're going to have the biggest amount of enrollments, the biggest amount of revenue, and the biggest amount of review, which are the three things, again, that we're going to be focusing on when creating the ultimate introductory video for our course. So enough of the talking, let's move to the actual delivery of the information, which you're called Digest. Please take notes. This is going to be one of the most valuable lessons of this course, and we're going to start with the origin story. <music> So if you follow again the fourth step introductory guide, you can see that the first step is us sharing our origin story. So in this video, we're going to be covering what is an origin story and how to share a successful origin story. So pretty much during the origin story, you share your backstory, your journey, and how you discovered this new opportunity. And this new opportunity is pretty much the fact, the thing that you want to sell, okay, in your course. It's pretty much the new opportunity, this opportunity that moved you from situation A to situation B, where situation B is the place where your viewers and your potential students want to be, and situation A is where they are right now and you used to be. So this new opportunity is this new opportunity, this vehicle to bring your audience from situation A to situation B. So you need to share your backstory, okay? Tell them a story in which you were in situation A, okay? And your journey to how you came up with this framework, if you will, to become a person of situation B. Very, very important is to actually analyze how you discovered this new opportunity. So to give you an example, okay, please screenshot this or write down in a notepad. This is what you need to be following in your introductory video. To give you an example, this is the, the my origin story in which I would present in my introductory video for this course right here, the seven day course, creator challenge. I will start by saying that I love teaching stuff and wanted to start gaining revenue from it. Okay. It was, you know, very good. I wanted to teach stuff and I wanted to make money from teaching stuff. Then I started teaching on YouTube, but the environment was more, you know, entertainment oriented rather than learning oriented. Okay. So this again is my backstory. Then I heard about the online education uh, industry. This starts the start of my journey. Okay, I started uploading online courses, but it took two to three months to create them. Again, this is my journey, how I tried to go from point A, which is the fact that I knew that I wanted to teach online, but YouTube wasn't really working for me, to point B, which is what I revealed right now, which is then I released that, then I realized that I created more courses that could generate more revenue, and now I create a course every week and 20x my revenue and my enrollments from it. So again, my backstory is the fact that I love teaching stuff and wanted to gain revenue from it. Then my journey started, which is pretty much that I started teaching on YouTube, but the environment was more entertainment based rather than information based. Okay, then this new opportunity came up, which is the online education industry, which I found out. Again, this new opportunity is my the fact that I started uploading courses, but it took me too much time to upload a course, two to three months again. And then comes my framework, 
my secret recipe in how I pretty much achieved this, which is that I created courses that I created more courses and I learned how to create one course every week. So this is your origin story and you can apply pretty much these principles, the principles of backstory, journey, new opportunity, framework and achievement into any pretty much industry or any type of online course that you're selling. Just you need to remember that people want to get from point A to point B and your course is going to be this boat, this vehicle that will, tra that will transform them from a person of the point A to a person of point B. Now, the final part is that when you're ending your origin story, people should think that your opportunity is the absolute best way to achieve what they need. So this is very, very important because then we're moving into the vehicle story. And in order for your vehicle story to stand by itself, you need to actually complete this goal right here, which is again, that when you're ending your origin story, people should think that your opportunity is the best way to achieve what they need. So again, let's move into the points of the origin story. First, step one, you share your backstory with a story, obviously. Okay, I'm, I'm mentioning the word story too much, but you need to create a story to guide your students through your backstory, then through your journey in this new opportunity, and finally, how you discovered this new opportunity and what this new opportunity gave to you. This is the successful origin story, and this is the first step, again, of a successful introductory video on our course before we start actually selling our course and discussing about how important our course is and what they will benefit and analyzing the curriculum of our course and the lessons of our course and the stuff that we have inside our course we need to actually check those four steps the origin story the vehicle story the internal belief story and the external belief story so now that we're done with the origin story let's actually move into what is the vehicle story and how we're going to persuade our students to enroll to our courses by analyzing our framework in a brief fashion again during our introductory video so in the next lesson we're discussing about the vehicle story so again, our origin story ended okay, with the people knowing that our new opportunity that we presented in our origin story is the best way for them to achieve what they want. After a successful, again, origin story, this is the result that we have in our audience psychology. The next story that we need to deliver them in the introductory video of our course is our vehicle story or our framework story. So this is what we're analyzing in this lesson right here. In this lesson, we are analyzing the correct vehicle story, how to structure a correct vehicle story, which is pretty much going to be our course outline, our process outline. But we need to elaborate on our process outline without actually giving the secrets on how we did this, right? Because no one's gonna enroll in our course if we just give all the secrets out from the introductory video. So we need to be very careful and very strategic to reveal the correct parts of our framework to pretty much get people to enroll without revealing everything, okay, so people don't actually find value in our course. So this is what we're analyzing again in this lesson right here. Welcome to the vehicle story. So the people again know the new opportunity. It's time to let them know about the vehicle to get there. And this vehicle is going to be our framework. This is why I have highlighted this in yellow. So during the vehicle story, we need to share how we learned or earned this framework that we're going to be presenting in our course and finally share the strategy that led us again to learn this framework. To get more specific here, in my case, I would share how did I manage to create a course a week? After creating more than 12 courses, I produced this framework in which we outline and script our courses with artificial intelligence and present it to our students using advanced storytelling principles, basic videography skills, and PowerPoint presentation. So now I can create a course every seven days and gain 20 times the revenue that I gained before. So let's break down this vehicle story right here. As you can see, the how did I manage to create one course a week is pretty much the transition between my origin story and my vehicle story, okay? So I present them the fact that I managed to create a course a week, okay? And then I ask them, how did I manage to do this? And this is where I introduce my vehicle, my framework. So again, after creating more than 12 courses, I produced this framework in which, okay, so this is the introduction to my framework. And again, remember, this is how I learned or earned this framework. Again, I learned it by producing more than 12 courses, and then I get into details about my framework, but I reveal just, let's say, the headlines of my process, of my framework, not how to actually do this. So I say that 
I outline and script my courses with artificial intelligence, but I don't actually teach them in my introductory video how and what prompts to like input in ChatGPT or course GPT, which I'm gonna be giving you with this course. So you see that I give them the headline, but not information. So there, people know that there is value here, but they don't know how to act on it. Again, and present to our students using advanced storytelling principles. Again, I'm telling them that we're gonna be teaching advanced storytelling principles in this course. So they know that they need to teach advanced storytelling principles and again, script with AI, but they don't know how to do this. They got the, the, the like let's say the title of the framework, but they don't know the actual framework. And then again, basic videography skills and PowerPoint presentation. So again, I give them the recipe, but I don't tell them actually how to, to, to act on it. And this is pretty much how we're gonna be delivering our framework in an introductory video of our course. And it makes absolute sense. Imagine that in the introductory video of our course, I was I would be like, okay, so you download course GPT, you input those, those prompts in chat GPT, then read this book for advanced storytelling principles, then videography skills you can learn from YouTube, no one would enroll, okay? Because we explain our framework. We don't wanna do this. We just wanna outline our framework. So after again, explaining to our students the transition between our origin story and our vehicle story, which is the first line right here. Then how I earned this framework, which is the second line right here after creating more than 12 courses. Then in the third line, we outline our framework, our framework in detail. And finally, we need to present them the achievement that we achieved after implementing this framework. Okay, because they need to see themselves achieving the same achievement as us. So now I can create a course every seven days and gain 20 times the revenue that I did before. So these are actually two huge goals. The first goal is that they drastically decrease the amount of time that they need to create a course. And the second one is that they gain 20 times the revenue, which is again, very, very helpful. So again, you want your audience to visualize exactly what you're telling them. You want your audience to feel like they have created more than 12 courses and they learned this framework, then I, they want you, I want your audience to feel how it is to script with AI, how it is to present to your students using advanced storytelling principles, and then you need to make your audience feel how it is to create a course every seven days and gain more than 20 times their revenue. So this is the vehicle story. We discuss, again, after the origin story, our framework, how we achieved this framework, the achievement that comes with this framework, which in this case is revenue and saving time. And finally, we present this to our audience in a way though in which we don't reveal everything about our framework. We just outline the basic principles of it. So now that we're done with the origin story and the vehicle story, it is time to move to the most important part of our introduction, which is actually the internal belief story. So more information on that in our next lesson. So welcome everybody to the third out of the four lessons in which we're going to be analyzing again how to create the perfect introductory introductory video for your course now this is a very unexpected lesson because when i was a beginner like you i didn't believe that audience actually had an internal beliefs internal belief problem and we need an internal belief story to debunk that problem now this is pretty much sounding very weird to you right now if you don't understand this but let me introduce you to why you need to add the internal beliefs story in your introductory video and this is why this is one of the most important things that most beginner content creators actually fail to again present to their audience and this is why they miss a huge percentage of their enrollments so what is the internal beliefs story so as soon as people listen to your origin story and your vehicle story okay and this is a fact they will immediately start doubting their ability to execute on this this is human nature this is basic human psychology okay once you present people an opportunity, they immediately start to doubt their ability to execute this. And this is why there is an internal belief story and an external belief story that we need to deliver to them. In this video, we're going to be analyzing the internal belief story. So what do we need to do? What does the internal beliefs story need to again deliver to our audience to debunk this internal belief theory that they have? You need to identify the false beliefs that your audience has and break them with a story. This is very general, so I'm going to be giving you specific examples on how to deliver the internal belief story. But I want you to really understand the fact that as soon as you present, again, your origin and the vehicle story, people will start doubting their ability to execute on this. This is basic human nature, basic human psychology. People are lazy. Okay, so we need to create stories to break this myth out of their minds. So how do we break those internal beliefs? We share our backstory, our journey, and we actually emphasize the part in which we were in the same level as our audience 
and discovered that there are no actually problems and we can actually execute on what we promise in our courses. So we need to rewind the tape, bring f through a story ourselves in the same position that our audience is right now and guarantee them that there is no problem and show them actually how we were able to do it. Now, I'm going to give you some examples of internal beliefs, especially in the type of course that I'm creating right here, okay, the seven-day course career challenge. So, it, it, to give an example, okay, some, an internal belief that one of my perhaps students could have is that he's not a good storyteller. So, how can I teach a course? How can I create a course if I'm not a good storyteller? So, if you identify this internal belief, what you need to do is to create a story to actually tell them that it's okay and you actually weren't a good storyteller in the beginning. So the story that I would create to debunk the internal belief that people are not good storytellers is this. I would say, listen, I was the worst in public speaking. Back in the day, I was afraid to go and share a PowerPoint presentation in front of my classmates. But then I realized that talking to a camera was completely different and way easier rather than talking to, like, say, 20, 30, 100 people on stage. Okay, you can talk to a camera in your bedroom. You don't need to dress up. You don't. You can press pause and record. You can edit out the, 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 the clips that you don't like. So it is completely different. So this is the internal beliefs story that I would use to debunk this belief this internal belief of my audience that they are not good storytellers. Do you understand what I'm getting there? Another internal belief, for example, could be this one. I don't know how to shoot good videos, okay? They have problems. They don't think that they need to shoot good videos with their cameras. They can't shoot good videos with their cameras. So what story would I share to debunk this internal beliefs, fear that they have and actually have them enrolled in my course? I would say, listen, I wasn't good at shooting videos either, but once I realized that all you need to do videography wise is to stabilize your camera in some books and press the record and then suddenly create courses, create those video assets that make you money, then it was a game changer. Okay, so you share the story, you bring yourself, you rewind the tape and you bring yourself back in the position in which your audience is right now. So you bring yourself in state A. Okay, you might be in state B because you're the instructor, but you need to bring yourself in state A. Okay, so the audience can actually you know, see you and be like, okay, he used to be like me. And then you explain how you debunked this internal belief. So again, they don't know how to shoot good videos. I was like, okay, yeah, I didn't even know how to use a camera. I didn't know some basic videography principles. I just had my camera in some books, stocked my camera and created a course. So this is the final internal belief story to begin me analyzing is that I'm not good enough to teach. This is a very big one. You know, in people that want to create courses, they don't feel like they are, let's say, educated enough or confident enough to teach something. And I would say, listen, one day a friend of mine asked me to teach him how I create courses. Okay. And I asked him, why do you want me to teach you and you don't seek information by professional, for example, filmmakers? And this friend of mine told him, this friend of mine told me that he felt closer to me rather than those faceless professionals that teach online courses online. So again, share those stories, share the fact that if someone has a problem that he's not good enough to teach, for example, I would tell him that, hey, look, you might not feel like you're good enough to teach, but you can teach someone that is one step behind you. Okay? You don't need to be like 20 million steps above him. You just if he's one step behind you, you can teach him how to climb a simple step. And also, you know, when you're smaller and you start teaching, for example, you don't need to be that professional. You can be unprofessional because people can relate with you. And if people relate with you, they will listen to you and pretty much examine and digest the information that you're giving them in a better way than actually receiving information for a big professional guy. So you get the point. This is how I would debunk this internal belief story. Now, the big one, the another big one is how do we identify the internal beliefs? Because if we haven't launched a course and people actually, we can't know their internal beliefs. So how do we identify what internal beliefs have, what people, what are the internal beliefs that people have regarding to our course, regarding to what we are presenting in our course? Well, there are many ways. You can go online and actually ask on Reddit, for example, or forum pages. You can ask your friends. For example, you can go to one of your friends and you can be like, hey, I'm thinking of teaching how to create a course in seven days. What do you think are some internal beliefs that make you doubt that you could execute on this? And the friends would be like, I'm not good enough to teach. Okay, I am. Um, I don't know how to shoot good videos and I'm not a good storyteller. So then you need to find a way to create stories to debunk those internal beliefs. So I hope this made sense. This was the first chapter of limiting beliefs of people, internal beliefs. Now it is time to move to actually 
external beliefs. So this is what we're analyzing in the next lesson. So this is what we're analyzing in this lesson right here. What is the external belief? Now remember, after breaking their internal beliefs, okay, people will start thinking about external forces that keep them from becoming successful. People really don't want to put effort and time into things that easily. Okay, they have internal beliefs and they have external beliefs. And it is our job through stories to debunk those beliefs. So you need to break those false beliefs about external forces that keep them from achieving their results. So exactly the same thing that we did with internal forces that keep them from achieving their results, we need to do with external forces that keep them from achieving again those results. So what could those external beliefs be? For example, I don't have enough time. This is an external force that keep them from achieving the result of enrolling in your course. I don't have enough, even enough time. So a story, for example, that I could say in this case is that I've been creating courses in parallel with my medical student studies. And honestly, it just feels like a good break from work while doing this online course thing. It doesn't take that much time. And again, I did this in parallel to my medical school studies, which actually take a lot of time. So this is, for example, a story that I could say to break those external beliefs. Another external belief that people could have is, for example, that I don't have a good camera. So the story that I would say is that I filled my first four courses with my phone and then managed to buy a camera with the revenue. So you don't need to have a good camera. I didn't have a good camera when I was starting out, but then I gained the revenue and bought like a better camera and a microphone and all of that stuff. So congratulations for sticking up until the end of this video. I hope that I really help you with information that I delivered to you. And if you want to work with me, make sure to send me an email and I'll get in touch with you. Thank you very much. And I'm going to see you in the next video.